Uh, this is a situation where someone has been brought for counseling and uh, by his parents or either spouse and he feels uh, you're speaking to him from a point of rumors okay whenever anyone brings someone to be counseling they have to agree I want to say this counseling doesn't solve all problems of people counseling only solve problem of people when they are willing if they're not willing we can guide them but if they totally don't cooperate it won't work counseling is not a cure all it's counseling basically is trying to help the person who is willing to open himself up to uh, uh, to face his problems and then how to overcome his problem so counseling someone who is unwilling the person is not willing to speak up doesn't is not willing to uh, talk about his problems it's not willing to change it's not going to change anything so the person has to be willing now of course we can counsel the person to become more willing uh, but also the still the person is still has to be uh, open to a certain extent for instance we counsel someone to bring them to Jesus they are not ready to believe in Jesus and we still would you know lead them uh, find out why they don't want to believe in Jesus what are they thinking and then try to find out how we can guide the person to understand God and what are some hindrances so we when we counsel some unwilling people only when the person is willing that we can help them and then it's very important that uh, excuse me it's very important that for the counseling it's very important that um, the person being counseled knows that someone has told the counselor about his need we cannot just you know uh, say okay uh, uh, go to the counseling session and then and then the counselor begin to talk about his situation the person being counseled has to be informed and ask if he's willing to be counseled if he's not willing to be counseled nobody can change him so uh, we don't tell the counselor about his secrets his problems uh, without telling him that it has been told to the counselor it has to be told to the counselee that uh, uh, what happened to him has been uh, uh, disclosed to the counselee counselor okay um, okay for instance an alcoholic addict um, if he keeps repeating the problem so then the person is not willing to change we can guide them and say do you want good things to happen to your life do you want to be healed do you want to have a, a life blessed by God if the person is not willing then we cannot help now but then for an a addict what happened is sometimes he wants to but he has no strength so we'll find out from the last time we talk about uh, three ways to handle problem first is his internal and external way of living and his support system and a way to cope with the problem so he has to be willing to work on this if he's um, if he uh, has problem because when the addiction comes then he's out of control then we have to find out what happened when he's out of control and then what can be done when he's out of control what can he do to uh, overcome the situation for instance he might seek help he might go to someone's home to ask for help and he has to have certain ways to think of the the blessings of God so that he would um, so that he will be strengthened by the blessings of God to face the problems so for addicts we have to uh, help them to get strength how to have strength and motivation okay number three um, okay this question is what I don't understand okay so no, number four yes handling a couple and one partner okay now please check your spelling when you submit the questions uh, this will spell pattern instead of partner but I guess it's partnered okay so uh, Google 
uh, dictionary online. You can check all the all the words uh, before you uh, send it to me. And sometimes I can guess, sometimes I cannot. Okay, so one partner doesn't accept mystic's claim. Uh, we okay if he doesn't say that he has this problem so we ask him what do you think is the problem and what happened so we ask them to describe what happened so from the description from both persons when they describe the situation when the husband talks and then how the wife responds and then when the wife talks how the husband respond and then we go through this process and ask them have you noticed anything happening during the communication so what's happening there and so what are the reasons why you're not communicating why why you're not uh, caring for each other so we'll break down we'll break down the process and even when we are counseling we'll we'll ask them what happened there so what happened there and then um, so what can be done uh, uh, are they willing to face a problem of communication and then try to uh, communicate a different way. So even if they don't admit it, then we'll say what happened and break down what happened, break down all the detail to find out how they communicate, how they listen to each other, how they talk to each other. Uh, so we can, uh, in the process, we can break down the process and find out who did not talk, I mean, uh, f uh, explain, talk from the heart and who is speaking negatively and who is not listening and then we'll we'll point out uh, what they were doing in the counseling session okay now if you have any question you can send them to me right away and then i can uh, respond if you have any questions and then for any other communication don't send constantly so that i will see exactly the questions you have um okay now uh, here so in an appointment, in an appointment, where couples who deserve guidance, actually who needs guidance, don't come in and uh, they don't want to be counseled. Now, if they don't want to, count to be counseled, that is difficult. So we can counsel the person who has come, how to face the other person. So if for a couple, if one person doesn't want to change at all, it's create difficulty. And the other person can try his or her best to accept the other person, to be nice to the other person, and to uh, love the person and help the person so that the other person is more open as time goes on. But if the other person totally don't want to work on the marriage, then uh, the only choice is the other person work on the marriage and it's it's become difficult. So marriage is a two-sided relationship. That's why before uh, marriage, actually when there is dating already, we should communicate with the uh, person, two persons, the couple, ask them why do they want to get married? Uh, wh why are they dating? And what is happening there? Uh, and how is the communication? To find out whether they are suitable for um, dating and marriage if they're not suitable the pastor should tell them you're not communicating you're not listening you're not loving the other person you just want someone who bring you know who give birth to children for you you just want someone to have sex with you you just want someone to give you money all these are not reasons to get married I know that there's too many people who get married not because they love the other person is because they want to get something and then they want to abuse the other person so uh, so when there is when they're dating we should educate the people in the church if the person if the other partner if the other partner has no interest in communication has no interest to love and to care it's better to stop the dating but some people say, I have to get married. I have to get married. Now, it's a social pressure. I want to say this. We don't have to get married. We don't have to get married. We, don't, we won't die if we don't get married. When I went to Africa, every time they said, 
uh, household mama, as if she's not a mama, she has no children, and they, they think that, you know, and also I brought some uh, women there, and they were not married, and they, and they talked to them and say, mama, I said, they are not mamas, they are not married, and they were surprised, they are not married? Can anyone be not married? They think everyone has to be married. It's, it's not a necessity. If you don't find a Christian and you don't find someone who loves you and who can communicate with you, it's better not to get married. But some people say, I have to get married for financial reason. Then I'll say it's better that you would, uh, you would uh, work on the, uh, you know, you can find work for yourself. Uh, work on a farm or whatever way, instead of getting married just for financial reason, because you're going to suffer after that. So I, my suggestion is that, is that marriage is not a necessity. Now it also happened in some other country. They always think that women have no ability to earn money, so they have to depend on a husband, and so they have to get married even if the husband is a terrible man. So uh, I would say, First, find out if he's suitable. He's a Christian. If he's whom someone God prepared for us. And it's a fact that in many churches, there are more women than men. And that's why in many countries, many Christian women don't get married because they cannot find a Christian man. And they, uh, they accept that. They don't say, well, I have to get married. I just marry a non-Christian. They don't because they know that there will be more problem if they marry a non-Christian. Okay, and then, um, and then in regard to the current situation where some people believe COVID-19 is a demonic disease caused by devil worship, even if it doesn't exist. Um, okay, there are all kinds of problems, health problems. They're not necessarily brought by Satan. Uh, it Mainly is the, the signs of the end time. The signs of the end time is that there will be more uh, sickness and disease and wars and famines and uh, all kinds of problems. And these are the end time. Now, of course, the devil is part of it, but it's not necessarily because some people worship the devil, because it came from a country that did not worship the devil per se. Uh, so we don't have to say that. Uh, we don't find, have to find a source. We just want to find ways to have the blessings of God and also to take care of ourselves. So we want to find blessings in God when we have a close relationship with Him and obey Him and love Him and serve Him. And then God will bless us. And then we want to be careful that we don't uh, get in contact with people uh, in close distance to avoid the sickness. So uh, I don't think it came from devil worship. Okay, another question. Marital counseling where the wife is a member of my church and the husband is not, and they require to be counseled. How does one do that? It doesn't matter. They don't have to be from the same, same church. We just counsel them and help them overcome the problem. Now, if they're willing to come to, for counseling, then they should be willing to work on the problems. Uh, and then in a counseling session, it's very important that we don't make them feel bad. Even if they have made mistakes, we don't say, you did something terrible. We guide them to say, uh, what do you think you have done? And why does the marriage fail? What's happening? Do you want to work on it? So to speak about the positive things and not to speak about the negative things is very, <coughs> is very important. When we counsel or when we talk with people, when we talk with anyone, we don't want to, we don't want to um, accuse them. Accusation doesn't do any good. So we want to uh, find out from the people what happened and then do they want to work on it and what are some possible ways to work on it. 